Here is what Hamlin had to say directly on his Actions Detrimental podcast that was released this afternoon. There's no explanation that he could possibly give, which he didn't, of reason for hanging a left. You know, he obviously didn't want to admit it. He did the, oh, I can't hear you, sorry. And then, uh, sorry, I can't hear what you're saying, but yeah, I, my car just couldn't drive it. Bullshit. The wheels were dead straight. Even after we crashed and, like, destroyed our he goes down the back straightaway, and you look at both tires, front tires are pointed the correct direction. Uh, and I pointed out in the data that I tweeted that once he got into the wall, there was nothing wrong with his car. He, he's turned the wheel back straight like he was going down the straightaway, and, and you can tell by data whether you've got toe link damage or not. So you can tell that basically if your line is skewed uh, one direction or another where you have to turn it left, turn it right, whether you've been a toe link or done significant damage. For God's sakes, Tyler Reddick pounded the wall twice as hard as he did and didn't hurt his car. Everyone hits the wall. But he threw a hissy fit, and he just hung a left on us in the most dangerous part of the, part of the racetrack that you possibly could. And it ended my day in his, and in my opinion, he shouldn't be racing next weekend because NASCAR set a precedent last year on this. All right, well, while we have Matthew here, I figure we might as well give him a chance to respond to this as well, because likewise, this is certainly going to be a hot topic over the next several days here. Are you surprised by NASCAR's swift action in penalizing Elliott? And ultimately, do you agree or disagree with the suspension? I'm mildly surprised that they did suspend him, but I do think that it is the correct decision. Uh, there was a president set last year, and he... <laughs> he did the same thing that Daryl Wallace Jr. did at Las Vegas, except that he didn't come as far down because he didn't have that far to go. Um, but yes, mildly surprised that they did it so quickly and that they did it to the sport's most popular driver. Uh, I, I understand that you would like to think that the sanctioning body takes every case and judges it fairly and as its own individual case, but something has to be said for this is the most popular driver in the sport for the last however many years. He was already out for a handful of races this year, and it is proof that in those races, the ratings dropped on television. Now, we don't know that they dropped because Chase Elliott was out. We're assuming that, but I think it's a pretty strong <laughs> assumption uh, that that's why those ratings did drop for those races. Um, so put all of that together. Also put together that Gateway is a track that only hosts one race. There's probably going to be a lot of fans there in nine shirts and Napa hats and everything else. It's not going to be able to see their favorite driver now. Put all of that together. I'm mildly surprised that they made this decision. I'm glad they made this decision, though. What he did was stupid. It, it, it just was. Uh, it's exactly what Daryl Wallace Jr. did at Las Vegas last year, as I said. And if you're going to suspend Daryl Wallace Jr. for that, which as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was the conversation of, well, you know, Daryl Wallace Jr. also walked across the track and confronted Kyle Larson. From what I understand, though, the suspension was for what Wallace did. If I'm wrong on that, please correct me. Um, correct. Yeah, so uh, it would just make perfect sense that this was the next step to take uh, with what Chase Elliott did yesterday. To the point that I made earlier, though, can, can we just have drivers not acting so stupid? From week to week, I mean, every week it's something. Every week it's someone's mad at Ross Chastain for doing this, or someone's mad at Denny Hamlin, or Denny Hamlin is mad at somebody. Denny Hamlin's mad at someone all the time. And these drivers are becoming the biggest hypocrites in the world. Uh, Denny Hamlin is screaming and wanting Chase Elliott to be suspended for a race for doing okay, maybe a little bit more blatantly, but doing what Diddy Hamlin did to Ross Chastain at Phoenix, intentionally putting him in the wall. So Diddy Hamlin screaming about that. Well, meanwhile, Chase Elliott didn't like what Ross Chastain did at Gateway last year. But if he thinks Ross Chastain is doing things wrong, I haven't seen Ross Chastain right rear someone head on into the wall at 160 miles an hour either. So these drivers are becoming more hypocritical by the week, it seems. And, 
and I know you guys have talked plenty about Ross Chastain, and I have my opinions on that. I don't think he's done nearly the amount of stuff that everyone makes it out like he has. But like I just said, he hasn't right reared someone, it, 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 at least to my knowledge. But I, I mean, Denny Hamlin. He talks about Chase Elliott throwing a temper tantrum. Denny Hamlin has been known to throw temper tantrums in the past, just as much as Chase Elliott has uh, been known to go off on other drivers and how they're racing him, but yet he goes and tr- turns around and does this. Uh, I- I'm thinking of Bristol a couple of years ago, and what Kevin Harvick did was hardly what Chase <laughs> Elliott just did. So, I, I mean... I- Again, back to the self-policing thing, it would be nice if these drivers would be able to just police themselves the way they're supposed to, but clearly they can't. And you know NASCAR doesn't want to step in and do this. You know NASCAR could not have, especially with all the stuff they went through this weekend with the weather and the logistics of running these races, the last thing they wanted to do was deal with this today and have to suspend the sport's most popular driver. But here they are having to step in because the grown men on the racetrack can't settle things themselves. They have to use their 3,000 however many pound race cars as weapons. They're acting like absolute children, and and it's really, really sad. Uh, One other point I want to make on this, too, is I really hope this isn't the way we're going to go with things. Now, I know analytics rule everything in sports these days. I really hope that after every accident, we're not going to see a driver race to Twitter in the blink of an eye and say, well, here's here's the, the, the S&D data, S&D, uh, S&D data. Uh, look what he did. Look what he did. You should suspend him. He, he turned left here. He hit the gas here. I really hope that's not where we're going. And I really hope that, NASCAR then does not have to look at the s and data and say, and look at every little finite piece of information. And I oh, turned a little left here. Uh, then he turned a little bit more. I, I, I don't want to deal with that. But again, I suppose they might have to, if the drivers keep acting like children. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, I agree with just everything you said there. Imagine a big house of drivers and daddy NASCAR is sitting on his rocking chair <laughs> And they get in a fight over the toy truck and they run over, look what he did to me. Look, 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 look at the SMT data. And that's exactly what we saw. And my mind goes back to 2017, to go all the way back to Martinsville when really the Chase Elliott Hamlin saga kind of took its origins. You see, you know, uh, Hamlin take Chase Elliott out of his first potential win. And so Phoenix, he takes Denny Hamlin out of the championship. And so it began and on and on we've gone. Um, but, and real quick, Brandon, everybody yeah. forgets just a couple laps earlier, Chase Elliott shoved Brad Keselowski up a couple of lanes to take the lead. Everybody seems to forget that because they lament the fact that he got robbed of his potential first win by Denny Hamlin. But just a as couple laps earlier, that. Brad Keselowski was screaming on the radio talking about that as well. Well, as did I forget that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, but, yeah, that, that's exactly that's exactly right, all the points here. that's um, I'm, I'm glad he's being suspended. I'm – very surprised they're doing that too. I think he's easily had the NASCAR's most popular driver award since Dale Jr. left. So 2018 to now um, would probably be the rec uh, where he's sitting right now. Um, and as I was thinking this over in my head, I was thinking, well, what are the differences with Chase Elliott's um, issue here and, and Bubba Wallace last year? And the only thing I could think of is, well, Bubba got out of his car, walked over a hot racetrack and started throwing punches at, or, you know, throwing hands at Kyle Larson, doing the push. And so there was a little more to, to that one. And, but I'm I'm really surprised that they're getting to chase Elliott's quicker and, and and in such a timely manner. And also really, if you're NASCAR from a business perspective, like you said, you, Matthew, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot. It's their most popular guy right after a really tough weekend as it was. And, St. Louis fans are not going to have Chase Elliott there. And that's going to make a lot of kids sad. And as it should, because Chase Elliott needs, and this is part of the policing themselves. Maybe they need to learn that you're letting a lot of people who see you as their hero down. Uh, they're going to go to, they're going to get their one, you know, some kids, their one, one race a year to gateway, you know, some families, most families, and they're not going to see you there. And as it should be, you should be 
discipline for your actions and the most popular driver is no exception. Yeah. And, you know, I guess to Matthew's point, I'm, I'm a little bit mildly surprised and especially that it came out today. I was expecting that the news would come out tomorrow and our friends over at Grid Tonight would uh, be able to take this story and they will have much more on this story uh, as it continues to develop here. It's all come together very quickly over the last couple of hours, like I was mentioning, but you know, Brandon, you're right. I mean, this Chase Elliott is going to have most popular driver. I mean, I don't know why they even bother with the vote right now. Like, I mean, he, it's like it's like it was with Dale Jr. and it's like it was before yeah. Dale Jr. with Bill Elliott. And it's going to be maybe if Isla Earnhardt gets in the Cup Series car twenty years from now and Chase can go around, maybe he'll have some competition. I don't know. Oh, but God. until that happens, Chase Elliott has that. I mean, you might as well put his name on the trophy at the start of year every year that he's active and running full time because I mean that's that's the size of his fan base, and I think that makes it especially important that NASCAR put the hammer down in this situation and held true to the precedent. I, I got to tell you, if they, if you want to talk about a firestorm on social media, not that they're, I mean, there's going to be one regardless because you know how Twitter can be, but I mean, if, if imagine if imagine how the bubble Wallace fans would have felt if Chase Elliott hadn't been suspended for a very similar situation and all the consi- the consistently inconsistent memes coming back to haunt NASCAR. I mean, it would, I think it would have been a very bad look after what they did with Wallace last year to let Elliott off the hook for this situation. Now, I'll also make this point as well because I think this is important. Bubba Wallace had already been eliminated from, I mean, he wasn't mm-hmm. even in the playoffs as a driver. He was driving a car that was in the owner's championship because of Kurt Busch's injury and everything. But I, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that was the first race after the 45 got eliminated from the owner's championship. So, that didn't have as many playoff implications. He did wreck a playoff driver in Kyle Larson, but, um, or actually I think Larson had been eliminated the week before too, but regardless, you know, that was Christopher Bell was yes. caught up in it. Who was in the playoffs. Bell was caught up in it. There you go. That was the playoff connection there. Um, I know we're not in the playoffs right now, but I did see before we came on Kyle Larson or uh, Chase Elliott's team, rather, they're not going to appeal the suspension. They are going to request a playoff waiver. If you give Chase <laughs> Elliott a playoff waiver for this, the suspension is, Completely meaningless Useless. because we've already seen with Elliott this year having missed races because of injury. If he can win a race, he's still gonna. I mean, and the points requirement doesn't even exist this year. All he has to do is go out and win a race <laughs> before the cutoff race, and he's in the playoffs. And all the races that he missed, all the points that he lost, they're magically erased and it's reset, and we can go fight for a championship like nothing ever <laughs> happened. If you give him a waiver, it makes the suspension. You basically just gave him a free vacation. I mean, yeah. who, who wouldn't love that? But- right? But why why wouldn't they give him the waiver? They give waivers out for everything else. They give waivers out for injuries. Uh, they give waivers out for sicknesses. They give waivers out if if their sandwich had some mold on it. I, <laughs> we give waivers out for everything now, even though at the start of this playoff system in 2014, there was that rule to make the playoffs. You have to compete in every race in the NASCAR Cup Series season. Well, clearly you don't. I mean, how many K- how many waivers have they handed out at this point? Unless your name is Grant Enfinger, then you don't get a waiver. <laughs> but Matt, yes. Kenseth, Matt Kenseth got one for replacing Kyle Larson after the first four races. I mean, I, I understand that that was an unprecedented time and situation and everything, but they they hand the waivers out like candy. I mean, it's more shocking when somebody doesn't get a waiver. I, I mean, I can't recall. I mean, Grant Enfinger is the only one that comes to mind with somebody – uh, maybe should have been considered for a waiver that didn't get one. Um, but I mean, they, they just, they, they hand them out, you know, like there's no tomorrow. So I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to get a waiver. I mean, it would be <laughs> now again, I, I hope he doesn't because I think that sends a much clearer message. And the fact that he's the most popular driver, it doesn't matter who you are. You're not going to get away with this, but I've got a feeling he'll get his waiver and he'll probably, you know, have that deficit erased and, be able to fight for a championship like it never happened. And and maybe it's a great redemption story and, and the fans love that, but I I might I, I gotta say I probably have a problem with it. But something that I would like to see happen, and I said this last year in the Bubba situation, they can suspend him for a race, sure. I I don't want him to be able, and I'm speaking of Chase Elliott here or whoever. I don't want Chase Elliott to go to his vacation house in Colorado or wherever to watch the race with his feet up, uh, enjoying you know, Hooters wings or whatever else. I, I want Chase Elliott at the track, and I would like him up there in the officiating booth. 
to see how difficult it is to officiate one of these races. I want him to be at the track to see his car run without him in it. And I want him in that officiating booth next to whoever is there that day uh, to see how difficult it is, how difficult their job is. That's one thing I love what Cliff King's very good. God bless him. He made Kyler Murray call plays in a preseason game uh, to kind of say, hey, this isn't as easy as you think it is. I think they should do that with these drivers. I really do. It's a great idea. Um, but, you know, he, he'll like I said, he'll probably sit in his vacation home or whatever, and he'll be given a waiver. And the only thing that'll come of this is that he doesn't score any points. Uh, and again, why they got rid of the top 30 rule either is beyond me. So Chase Elliott will have, after this suspension, what, 11, is it, chances to go out and win a race and make the playoffs. I think I think they got rid of the top 30 rule because there was a debate about Corey LaJoy last year. He would have been borderline <laughs> if he had won one of the Atlanta races. But again, with no disrespect to Corey LaJoy, and by the way, congratulations to him. He's got a great opportunity. Yes. This weekend. I hope career. he goes and makes the most of it. But with no disrespect to him or Spire, that car was not winning a championship regardless last year. So I think it, no. it, it's, little, it's completely <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. And you know, you want to talk about the champ what the champion should be and Lord knows if we go down this rabbit hole again, the show's never going to end, so we're not going to do it. But, you know, <laughs> if you, I mean, I, those cars aren't, they're not going to be in the final four anyway. So it, it just, it seems like, you know, a situation where like, what are we doing here? 